Number 47. Repeat example 10.15 again for the third time, in which the stick is free to have translational motion as well as rotational motion. All right. So um, this problem becomes a little more challenging because uh, the the uh, stick up here or whatever, what are they calling it? Yeah, the stick is not fixed anymore with a nail. All right. It's allowed to have translational and rotational motion. So what that means all right, is... Since it now can have translational motion after the collision occurs here, we do know that the linear momentum will therefore be conserved. All right, it's basically an inelastic collision. All right, it tells me that it sticks to the stick, the disc that is after the collision. So I'm actually going to start with letter C first, I guess, here in answering that. All right, so letter C, um, or uh, to answer letter C, I'm really going to do that the whoops that the initial momentum is equal to the final momentum and this is the p represents linear momentum so we know that momentum is equal to mv right so the uh, first the only object that's moving linearly is the disk in the beginning so this is really the mass of the disk times the velocity of the disk that will then be equal to the final momentum we know that the collision is inelastic and therefore it's going to be mass times velocity again right however the mass is now the mass of the disc plus the mass of the stick because they're stuck together multiplied then by the uh, linear velocity of that you know disc um, stick system all right uh, this is the final velocity of the whole thing stuck together so this is actually simple to solve for right just divide out uh, this combined mass here and we're going to get then that the velocity of the disc and stick after the collision is equal to the mass of the disc times the velocity of the disc initially divided by the mass of the disc plus the mass of the stick. All right, and why don't we just solve this first? So in finding the uh, final, uh, which in terms of finding the final velocity, all right, we'll plug in the value of the mass of the disc, which was 0 0.05, the velocity was 30, and then it's going to be the mass of the disc, which is uh, 0 0.05, plus then the mass of the stick, which was, uh, they told me us, or they told us, right, 2 kilograms. So 0 0.05 times 30 divided by parentheses uh, 2.05. So we get about, so the velocity of the disc stick system is going to be 0, 0 0.732 about. All right, I'm actually going to leave it exact, a little more exact. Uh, uh, 0.7317, all right, that's meters per second. Now this is gonna be important uh, for something that we're gonna do in a minute. Uh, what I'm going to do, this is not the answer to letter C, all right, this is uh, part of letter C though. Let me just take this and uh, minimize it, one second. Reduce it down a little bit. I'm gonna throw it on up here, all right, just as a little uh, piece of information I'll need. But if I know that the momentum is conserved right before and after to find the uh, to find the momentum before, I would have just found the multiplication between those two, right? Uh, simply, this is going to be the mass of the the mass of the disk times the velocity of the disk, which is again 0 0.05 times then uh, 30, right? Times 30, so that works out to be 1.5. Okay, that is the momentum, and right, the units will be kilogram kilogram meter per second. So this is going to be the momentum before and after. Remember, they're equal to one another. All right, so this is really the answer to letter C. Although in doing letter C, um, I can find out the, the translational velocity afterwards. So let me just put this, let me just put this down here one second. So here we will write letter C. All right. And they're both, remember, it's both the same. Okay, so let's just erase now this work. So now this this part, um, just know that we have the velocity of the, the translational, right? The linear velocity after the collision. So now what makes this problem tough is how to frame it out, all right, for part A. So uh, take a look at the picture over here. So basically how we're going to think about this is if we're trying to find the angular velocity, right, of the two after the collision, I have to, if I'm talking about angular velocity, I have to use angular components in terms of my calculations, all right? So the main idea here is that not only will linear momentum be conserved like we just found before, but also 
rotational momentum or aka angular momentum will also be conserved all right so i know that the that the uh, initial angular momentum will equal the final angular momentum now how do we define initial and how do we define final well that's part of the trick in this problem so the uh, initial angular momentum we're going to consider the point when this disk just at the infinitesimally small time point, like right before the collision, basically, or you can say right at the collision, the instant the collision happens, all right, that's going to be the initial state uh, of our calculations, all right, right when this disk literally just makes a collision. So basically, all of the angular values we can then relate to the, to the linear values. I've done this uh, in another example, some some number in the 40s, I don't remember. I think we did it a couple of times, actually. And um, uh, now for this particular uh, stick, once the disc then attaches to the stick, then right after that collision happens, then we're going to get this rotational motion as well. So once the disc stick system starts rotating, that's going to be the final stage. All right. Okay. Now, with, with that groundwork laid out, the next important idea then in considering that frame is, uh, is, is this fact. So think about that this, this disk, all right, this disk is coming in with a velocity of 30, 30 meters per second, okay? Now, we just found that the final, uh, that the final velocity of the disk, the translational, right? The final uh, translational velocity of the disk stick system will be uh, 0.7317 meters per second. So essentially what I need to think about is how did we, how are we going to distribute this initial 30 meter per second value of the velocity? How it's going to be distributed is in two ways, okay? We can think about breaking this velocity up into two parts, okay? Uh, in one part, part of this velocity will go to the linear linear velocity, basically right, uh, linear velocity just at the point of collision, okay? At, I'll say, point of collision. Okay, then also another part of this, and we found that value, right? I should say this was 0 0.7317, okay? The other part of this 30 meter per second will go, okay, to producing an angular, angular, angular velocity, okay? Now, the thing is, though, we can't just take this linear value of 30 meters per second and, and subtract uh, this linear velocity and call it then angular velocity, all right? So basically what I'm going to call this is angular V sub T. And I know that then if I'm breaking this velocity up into two parts, basically I'm just doing a subtraction here to find this value, right? I could say then it's 30 minus, minus 0 0.3 excuse me, 7317, which this works out to be a number. Why don't we just calculate it right now? So this is 30 minus 0.7317. So 29.27, I'm going to say. So 29.27, all right? Now, now that we have this groundwork laid, all right, let's now begin to uh, develop this idea. Now, the reason why I had to find this number is because I have to find the part of the incoming velocity that I can attribute to the angular tangential velocity, okay? Now, when I break this on up, right, we know that the these are balanced, so uh, we also know this formula over here, therefore the initial uh, uh, angular momentum will be equal to the a moment of inertia of the system initially, right? The initial part was, remember, the disk is separate, so therefore this will be sub d, and then multiplied by the angular velocity of that disk, right? This is basically at the point once they just, just collide, all right? Is then equal to the moment of inertia of the whole system, of the disk stick system, multiplied by the angular velocity of that uh, disk stick system. 
Now, we are after this variable. So why don't we just solve it for that, okay? So we realize that the uh, angular velocity of the disk stick system will be equal to uh, ID omega D all over IDS, okay? Now what we need to do is we need to expand on these terms because we don't know each uh, particular value. All right, what I'm gonna do here is let me just take this, actually, um, yeah, let me move this one second, guys. All right, I'm just gonna move it over here a little bit. So now let's expand on each of these terms, okay, in here. Now, the angular vol velocity of the disk stick system, right, as it, after it begins rotating, we can just, will be equal to the moment of inertia of just the disc. Now remember the disc is just making contact here at the top and then it would be rotating around so it has a moment of inertia equal to mr squared. So this is gonna be m uh, mass of the disc multiplied by the radius of the disc squared, okay? Then multiplied by the angular velocity of the disc, right? Just as it makes contact, but we don't know this, but we do know the tangential component of it. Right, So we can remember this formula that Vt is equal to r omega. Solving this thing for omega, we realize that it's the tangential velocity over the radius of rotation will equal the angular velocity. So I can take this basically and substitute it on in for omega, right? So now we have the tangential velocity, which is what we found over here, okay, divided by the r. Now, if we notice here, just mathematically, these will cancel. And now this is over the total system moment of inertia. So the total system, system moment of inertia after the collision, remember, is the disk um, stick system. So it's going to be the mass of the disk times the radius of the disk squared. I'm using this formula. Plus then we have then the um, rod here rotating about its axis at one end. So that's going to now be the mass of the stick times the length of the stick squared all over uh, let me just move this down slightly, all over three, okay? All over three. Now, great, and we actually have everything we need to know now in order to calculate, all right? So now we can just plug in the values. So the mass of the disk was 0 0.05, the radius was 1.2, the tangential velocity there just before the collision is this number, all right, 29.27. That's how it, that that is how it differs from if there was no translation, if, if there was no translational motion. If there was no translational motion allowed, then this number would have been 30, okay? And we've done a problem like that before. I mean, we've done this one like three or four times now. So hopefully, uh, you know, it's actually not a bad idea to keep doing the same problem with different uh, conditions because you get to see how the problems work. So this is 0 0.05 then times then 1.2 squared plus now um, mass of the stick was two kilograms multiplied by the length of 1.2 squared all over three. And uh, let's calculate, all right? So throw it into the calculator. So what do we have here? We're gonna have 0 0.05 times 1.2 times 29.27, and then take that value and now divide that by, in parentheses, 0 0.05 times 1.2 squared plus uh, two times 1.2 squared divided by three. And we get a value of about 1.70, all right? So now here is the answer, all right? So I'm gonna actually just write it on up here at the top already. So for letter A here, all right, we have the angular velocity of the disk stick system, right? This is the final value is 1.70, 1.70, and that's in terms of radians per second, all right? So that is for, that's the answer for part A. Okay, so let's get rid of all this. All right, now what we will do is we will move on to now part B. Okay, I don't think we'll need any of this anymore. I hope not at least. No, oh, yeah, I probably will. I'm just looking at it now, all right? After the collision, we're gonna need the moment of a total system moment of inertia, but it's fine. We'll... So for um, letter B, letter B now, um, Kinetic energy before is simply before the collision happens, it's just this disc moving linearly. So this is easy, right? It's equal to one half mv squared. So this is just one half times the mass of the disc, 0 0.05 times the velocity of the disc, which is 30 squared. And what do we get here? So 0 0.5 times 0 0.05 times 30 squared and 22.5. All right, so the kinetic energy 
the kinetic energy before the collision is equal to 22.5 joules. All right, great. So that takes care of the one part of part B. All right, I'll leave part B's answer over here. And then we have to deal with now the final kinetic energy. All right, so the final kinetic energy now, so this is KEF. Remember that the final kinetic energy has two components to it. It has a translational component and it has a rotational component. So I can say that it's going to be the kinetic energy of the translational motion of the linear motion plus the kinetic energy of rotation. So keeping this in mind, the final value here will be one half the mass of the total system, right? Because we're talking about after the collision happens. So the disk stick system multiplied by the velocity, the linear velocity of the disk stick system. That's what we found before up there squared plus then one half times the moment of inertia of the disk stick system times the angular velocity of the disk stick system squared. All right, disk stick squared. So let's now just plug in the values, right? So we have now uh, K E F is equal to now one half times the mass of the disc stick system. So here's the mass of the stick. Here's the mass of the disc. Just add them together. So that's 2.05 multiplied by the tan, uh, not tangential, but the translational velocity of the disc stick system, which we found up at the top over here. So that's going to be uh, 0.7317 squared plus now, now save space. I'll do it down here. So plus now one half times then the uh, moment of inertia of the disc stick system. So it's going to be, we just found this before, it's the same value. So it's 0.05 plus now um, the uh, radius. So it's 1.2 squared. That's for the disc and then for the stick. It's going to be its mass multiply its by the blah, 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 by its length divided by three. All right. And then multiplied by the, now the angular velocity. And that's about 1.7. So 1.7 squared and what do we get here when we add it all together let's see so we got 0.5 times 2.05 times 0.7317 squared plus now 0.5 times in parentheses 0.05 times 1.2 squared plus 2 times 1.2 squared all over 3 close those parentheses then multiply by 1.7 squared so we get about 2.04 2.04 and that's in terms of joules so that would be the final now kinetic energy value. So that completes then part B. We already talked about part C, so we are good to go. All right. Hope this video helped, guys. Uh, please remember to subscribe, hit the like button, and we'll see you soon. Well, I won't see you. I'll talk, talk to you soon. I'll teach you soon. You know what I mean. Take care.